I've made a couple of reviews before about using these 360 cameras, showed some of the neat tricks that they can do. There's quite a few cool effects you can get with these. I've showed what is probably its unique selling point, the invisible selfie stick, which means you can shoot yourself holding the camera but without the ugly pole in shot. I've showed using them as action cams and these cameras are great for that because the problem when you're shooting these sorts of shots is getting the framing right. You can't concentrate on that while you're doing whatever activity it is like skiing and these cameras are great for that because they're filming everything around them all in one go so you can pick the framing of the shot that you want in post which makes shots like this so much easier. So you might be wondering why go for something like this because this isn't marketed as an action cam. It's a little bit too big, a little bit too heavy and, and bulky for that, um, but it's got some massive advantages. This is the Insta360 One RS One Inch 360 Edition. Yeah, it's a real mouthful. They can't get their naming right, but they've got everything else right with this camera. It's, uh, it's just the quality of it. So it's a modular design. You just push the buttons on the edge here to pull it out of its case, and then you've got three of the main camera parts all pulls apart and you've got the uh, SD card hidden away a little bit in here. It's a bit fiddly to get in and out but uh, not too bad. And Insta also do a bracket for this one so you can hold uh, a receiver for a radio mic on there so I'm using the Rode ones here. Fits in there really well, doesn't, don't see it at all in the stitch line and it does give you sound but it's not, it's not top quality, it's slightly tinny so if you want it perfect I take it directly off the microphone in, in post. But yeah, really useful. With this, I can do shots like this one. It was the opening sequence to one of our YouTube videos and I wanted the quality to be really good. And the, the main shot in this is this one. It's the shot from the bow looking back. So to fit in with the other shots in the sequence, it needs to match that sort of quality. Because the other shots in that sequence were taken with more high quality cameras and a you know, very good quality drone with an excellent uh, camera on it, I needed those shots from the Insta to, to match that. And I think I've, I've managed that by using the one inch version. So that shot back from the bow is the classic invisible selfie stick I was using. This one, which is the three meter uh, version. I like these, these long poles are definitely worth having if you're gonna get a 360 camera, get a, a long pole. And, th and these ones are, are the best ones. They're carbon fiber, nice and light and not too bendy. Um, that, especially with this camera, because it's a little bit heavier. If you've got a not very good selfie stick, it will bend and it won't be invisible anymore because it hasn't got a straight line back to, to your hand. But with this one, yeah, obviously it wasn't holding it while I had there's one of these mounts which are really good as well, little clamp mount, so, so that goes on the end of here and the boat's got lots of bits of uh, stainless steel tubing on the front of it, so basically this was just clamped on to one of those and, and stuck out a long way so that it can look back and get that shot and get that shot you know, with, with really good quality. And of course you can hand hold it as well. This is the first shot actually I did with this camera. It was in Malta and it can go down and through the window and come back and, and look at you. So it's, you know, it's really quite a, a cool shot. That's great to find things like that to do with the, the 360. I've actually improved the settings I think since I did that. I had that in log. I found actually in vivid colors it works, uh, it works better. Uh, even you know in post you can try and bring things out but actually in sunny conditions the log didn't seem to be as good as shooting it straight and vivid in the first place. And I put now the, the sharpness all the way down to low. I think I had it for medium in that, but yeah, just make, put the sharpness at, at its lower setting and uh, either underexposed a little bit if you're locking the exposure or auto exposure if you need it because you've got a, a big change in exposure. But yeah, these cameras for, for bright conditions, really good for dark conditions because they're sensitive uh, with their chips as well, really good. But I have found some little problems like this one with flare. So in direct sunlight, sometimes you get this odd flare. I mean, bulbous lenses like this, they're, you know, they're susceptible to that as well. But I found this camera to be a little bit more susceptible than the, the X2 and, and the X3, probably just because of the, the size of the bit of glass that you're, you're talking about. It's just certain angles. So just watch out for it and maybe do a shot from two different angles, just in case one of them is going to get that sort of flare on if it's really hard direct sunlight as we've got at the moment. Now, one of the things to get your head around with these cameras is its resolution. I'm just gonna put this one out on the pole to uh, try and demonstrate that because this one has got 6K resolution, which sounds huge, but if I put it out and get the shot, so this is a shot that you would get with it in its small planet mode, and that's everything. So that's your 6K resolution. That's your, from your two lenses, your two chips, 
stitch together, giving you the whole thing. Of course, what you're more liable to want to use is something like this. So you've just cropped it in to give a linear type shot like you'd get with a, a standard camera. So with this one, it's made that once you've got that shot, you end up with about full HD, 1920, 1080, which is, which is good. It's a good, it's a good compromise really. It gives you a, a good shot, but actually, it's not a lot, 6K, because if you think of these ones, the X2 and the X3, these are 5.7, so it's not a massive jump up. And a lot of people were sort of disappointed at that and, and thought, well, it should have more. Well, if you're really going to crop in, then it, you know, it might make a difference. But people get a little bit too over-enthusiastic about the resolution. And that, that goes for all cameras, even stills cameras. People talk about megapixels and only go for ones that have got massive amounts of megapixels. Well, that's only important if you're going to blow that steals picture up to a poster the size of a side of a house and the same with these sorts of things really you only want the 4k stuff if you're going to look at it on a very large screen for, for normal type screens full hd is absolutely fine you're not going to see the difference more it's much more important to have a good quality chip good processing in fact the, the best camera i've got on, on this boat is this one it's not capable of shooting 4k yeah, but it's by far the best quality so you know it doesn't that doesn't count so so much but yeah for a for a 360 camera because you are constantly cropping in it will be nice at some point you know if if you get more resolution than that but you know just don't get too over enthusiastic about you know that being the the, the be all and end all of getting a good camera. This camera is going to get you some really good quality shots. Uh, and if you use it like this in post, make sure that you go through uh, and export it as ProRes 422. And do use the Insta Studio. It's an excellent app for uh, Macs and PCs. And also, of course, uh, on your mobile, you can just do things directly on there, which is, is really useful. The same as you can, uh, you know, with the, the X2 and the X3. So, yeah, I mean, you, if you're going to get one of these cameras, you're going to need to have something that you actually really want to, to use it for. If you're only going to get one camera, then this is more versatile. It's, you know, these are fully waterproof. The, uh, the, the one inch version isn't fully waterproof. You're not going to put it underwater. It's not as useful for uh, for things like a, an action cam. You can't swing it around your head for these sorts of shots using the, the bullet time feature that these have. So it's, it's not meant for that. But if you've got a specific purpose for it and you can justify the cost, definitely get one of these cameras.